Hey there, Jake Dempsey, CEO and co-founder of Project Broadcast. In this video, we're going to talk about configurable forms, which in Project Broadcast are a way for you to collect information from contacts using unique URLs that are specific to each contact. Before we get, begin, remember you can always visit training.projectbroadcast.com for additional training modules. And if you have any questions about getting your account set up or questions about features in Project Broadcast, make sure to email us at support at projectbroadcast.com. Now, when you think about configurable forms, configurable forms in Project Broadcast are kind of like Google Forms, not as robust, but they're all they're integrated with Project Broadcast. You can leverage any of the fields on the contacts or any of the custom fields that you've designed in Project or defined in Project Broadcast to include on your forms. In this demo, we're going to go through our example of creating a raffle. We'll, we're going to use the keywords feature and we're going to use the configurable forms feature to show you how you would marry these two together to start collecting information for your contacts. Let's hop into Project Broadcast. While we're in Project Broadcast, we can find the configurable forms area underneath our audience uh, area in the left-hand navigation. Uh, I'm going to create a configurable form, and I'm just going to call it raffle. We talked about raffles in our previous uh, video on keywords, but I'm going to start tying these things together in, you know, in the context of wanting to create a raffle to show you the idea of how you can use configurable forms in Project Broadcast to collect information from contacts. So again, let's pretend I'm, you know, at some kind of expo or event where I'm setting up a table and I want to do a raffle for the people that come by my table. And I can't talk to everyone. I need a way to collect information for people that come by and want to participate in the raffle in hopes of creating a list, a lead list, a prospecting list of everyone that comes by and texts me either the word raffle or scans my QR code. So I'm going to start with just creating the configurable form. I can add a description here. The description is something that the recipient will see when they see your configurable form. So I'm just going to put a sample description here. Now, again, your description is going to be much better. It's probably going to outline what the raffle is, what you're giving away, when you're going to, you know, when you're going to select the winner, um, and any other kind of expectations you want to set with people as they see the form. As we already said, you can use the apply keyword feature to trigger after someone submits the form. I'm going to come back to this feature in a moment once we start putting these things together. Now, for my raffle, I want to require that they have to fill out their first name and their last name. And you know what? I'm going to also collect their email address. Like I said before, you can use any of the features or fields rather on a contact um, in your configurable form, but you can also include your custom fields. Now, maybe you've decided to use some of your custom fields as questions that you want to capture on some type of lead form, like, you know, what's your favorite color, for example, or how much weight do you want to lose or, you know, whatever is specific to your uh, particular business use case. For my raffle, I'm just going to collect first name, last name, and email. So I'm going to save this for now. And we're going to come back to this configurable form to kind of tie all these things together. So let's, let's think about this for a second. How am I going to get the configurable form for someone to fill out? Well, what I would probably do is I would go to my keyword area and I'm going to create a raffle keyword. Now, like we already talked about in the keywords video, every keyword comes with a QR code. So now I can print, you know, a piece of paper to put on my table that says, hey, if you want to join the raffle, just either text the word raffle to my project broadcast number, whatever that number is, or maybe I put the QR code on the piece of paper where people can literally just scan the QR code, which will text the word raffle. Now, I want to make sure to reply whenever someone texts me the word raffle or scans my QR code. So I'm going to go to my reply message. And I'm going to say, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to fill out the raffle form to be entered to win. Here is the form. And now I'm going to insert a dynamic field for the configurable form that we created, the raffle form that we created. And then I'm going to end with, uh, we'll pick a winner at 3 p.m. I'll make sure to let you know if you're the winner. Now, again, you're probably going to have an image with your message, and you're probably going to include emojis. Um, I'm just 
you know, building this as a sample. So thanks for stopping by. Make sure to fill out the raffle form to be entered to win. Here's the form. So I'm going to save that. So right now, let's let's think through the process. Someone's going to come by the table. They're going to text me the word raffle. This reply message is going to reply with the form for them to fill out. Well, I want something to happen once they fill out the form. So I'm going to go ahead and create another keyword, and I'm going to call it raffle done. Now, this is really like an internal keyword because they're never going to text me the word raffle done. I just want to create this keyword as a way to do some additional automation. Now, for this example, I'm just going to, again, edit the reply message. And I'm going to say, thanks so much for filling out the form and participating in the raffle. Good luck on winning. And then maybe I'll say, remember, we're going to, well, if I can spell, remember, we are going to pick a winner at 3 p.m. Again, you're welcome to include images, emojis, and you have up to 1,024 characters. Now, right now, someone texted me the word raffle. Raffle responded with the message that has the configurable form but nothing's telling the raffle done keyword to trigger. So I'm gonna go back to our configurable form that we created for the raffle, and that's where I'm gonna use the apply keyword to contact on form submission. I want a keyword to trigger when someone fills out the form. So I'm gonna set the keyword, and the keyword that I want to trigger after they submit the form is my raffle done keyword. So I select raffle done, add that to my configurable form. So again, I'm going to walk through the process. Someone's going to text me the word raffle or scan the QR code, which also triggers the keyword. That keyword is going to respond with, thanks for stopping by, make sure to fill out the raffle form and give them a link to the form. They will then fill out the form that has my description that requires the first name, last name, and email. And when they fill out the form, it will trigger the raffle done keyword and the raffle done keyword says, thanks so much for filling out the form. Now remember, keywords by default are set to auto tag. So let's walk through what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna text the word raffle so that you can see what happens when someone texts the word raffle. And again, this same thing would happen if they scanned your QR code. So when someone sends you the word raffle, the system is going to automatically schedule the message to them that says, thanks for stopping by, make sure to fill out the form. Now, I want to show you just what this form looks like. Now, remember, I sent this message, so they're probably clicking this link from their phone, but I'm going to click it here in the demo just so you can see what they're going to see. If I click this, I can see the form. Now, the form's got my sample description, and remember, your description is going to capture, uh, or excuse me, explain more information about your raffle, maybe some information about you or your product. I just use this as my example. And when that person fills out the form, and clicks submit, if we go back to the chat conversation, we can see what would have happened in Project Broadcast. Notice that when they filled out the form, the system automatically triggered the raffle done keyword, and it shows you that it was triggered via a configurable form. You'll also notice that it responded with the raffle done response. Now, because keywords also have auto tag turned on, we should see two tags. We should see a raffle tag, and we should also see a raffle done tag. So if I go over to tags, we can see that I've got a raffle tag with Jake in it, but also I've got a raffle done with Jake in it. Now, what's probably going to happen in this example, let's say I was running, you know, again, a table at an event. I may have 100 people in my raffle keyword or tag rather, but only say 60 people in the raffle done. Well, that means that of the 100 people, 60 of them actually filled out the form. And now you've got two lists that you can work with. Now, I'll give you kind of an advanced tip here. I won't show it in the demo, but you can imagine you want to follow up with each of these people. You want to follow up with the people that texted you raffle because they never filled out their info. And that looks a little bit different than the people that probably entered their information. So if you haven't watched our campaign videos yet, make sure to watch those because what you might decide to do on the raffle keyword, if we go back to our keywords and look at the raffle keyword, what you might decide to do 
is put them in some type of campaign that follows up with them as a prospect. And that campaign may be the same or it may be different than the people that filled out their actual name information. And you may want to add those people who filled out the information um, to a campaign as well. So remember, you can tie things like configurable forms, keywords, and campaigns together to create a strategy for your business. And configurable forms allow you to create as many as you want. And each form can have a name that is you know, only seen by you. You can have a description that just is something you show to the person filling out the form. It can apply a keyword when the form is filled out. The redirect URL also allows you to direct the person to some URL after they fill out the form. So maybe you've got an e-commerce store and you're doing this raffle and you want to direct them to your e-commerce store after they fill out the form. When I filled out the form, you notice it just gave me an alert saying, thanks so much for filling out the form. But I could also direct them to a different URL after filling out the form. And then I've added them to fill out first name, last name, and email. I could decide for something to be, you know, on the form, but not required. Um, and in my case, I wanted all three fields required. And then you've got your 50 custom fields that you may have already set up. If you haven't, make sure to go watch the custom fields video. And you can include those custom fields on your form as well. So this allows you a lot of flexibility to capture information from contacts. Now, one piece of advice I'll also give you is that whenever a link is generated for a configurable form, it is specific to this contact. You never want to copy this link and paste it to another contact. The way this is built is when someone visits this URL, it is specifically generated for this contact. So if I copy and pasted this URL and gave it to another contact, you know, just directly, then whenever they fill it out, it's going to keep updating this contact because this URL is specific to this contact. And all that means is anytime you want to send a configurable form, whether it's in a campaign, a keyword, a scheduled broadcast, you always want to insert the configurable form via the insert functionality. That way, the link is unique for every contact that receives the link.